Taurus Singles, welcome. Doing your singles reading for mid-October 2021. Um, this is uh, called Meet the Soulmate. I try to hear it's a very positive reading simply because the question is, Spirit, help us meet the soulmate, the person that's right for Taurus here. So we're not going to be talking about the next ex-problem, the next ex-wife, ex-husband. Um, it's not a triggery reading, I don't think, um, uh, because we're just describing the one who's right for you. And I'm not saying they're perfect, but what I want to do is get an idea of your person, personality, a pickup, uh, personal history, behavior maybe, um, in astrology. I pick up a lot of their astrology. And, um, Use eight cards here with the call the four uh, pillars: emotional, intellectual, sexual, and lifestyle compatibility. So we'll look at those areas of this person, kind of how they're like, what they're like in relation to that. Okay, already pre-shuffled. Let's get some energy on them. Here we go. This is Taurus singles, mid-October. Thanks, Spirit. Eight of Swords in the emotional position. Be done with the Four of Wands. So Eight of Swords under the Four of Wands. And uh, if you could kind of like uh, uh, withhold judgment for a minute. Let's lay all of these out. That's in the emotional. We have Justice in the intellectual position. Over the, wow, Wheel of Fortune. Well, that's kind of heavy, you know, when you get two major kind of here in the intellectual position. Um, and I do see the above a little bit, like the more conscious energy of the person. And down here in the bottom can be more called unconscious energy of the person. Um, this is uh, pretty much implying a Libra sun, particularly coming with the Wheel of Fortune, I think, even more. So moving on to the sexual position, Aries energy, Emperor. It's going to be hard to have Aries energy in Venus and Mars, which this reads for, if that's Libra. Page of Cups. This is also in their sexual energy. We we'll actually like that, coming with the Emperor. So... I don't really see them as being dominant sexually. I see them as kind of like that's where they're at, their softest spot is. Maybe that's, I don't know, is that a normal thing for guys? Uh, but that's like, that's where they're the most vulnerable, maybe. You know, because it's like almost like they go from being the emperor. I gotta start with sex, huh? They go from being the emperor to the page of cups. Um, so I get the feeling too with your person like in terms of the way they love you um, It's going to be this emperor energy. It doesn't necessarily have to be Aries. I'm thinking on that Let me Go back to the moon the moon. I pick up in the first column in emotions um, But the way this person would love you anyone really um, Would be in this emperor way very solid um, be a feeling of someone that's very grounded and there for you um, and then also emotional and kind of emotionally vulnerable I think with this page of cups it's almost like a, I don't want to say noticeably emotionally vulnerable like you as a, as a lover uh, you would feel their strength uh, become more vulnerable and how they feel the release their body and, and yield, you know, to uh, lovemaking. So that's going to make this Mars important, you know. Um, and I don't see this as being a bad thing, but that would, talk, you know, sex you usually don't know right away. You could, a lot of this stuff you could tell on a date or hell, even online. Um, but this it might take a minute. Um, but it feels very uh, sweet to me, you know. Uh, it's like someone that's uh, very strong and loves very strong and is very committed and together and um, a good strong sense of self-value they have a strong sense of self-value they're not going to self-sabotage anything like that and yet they can be uh, vulnerable emotionally vulnerable uh, particularly sex helps them with that 
So, Two of Swords, this is in their lifestyle and core values. It's interesting that Two of Swords come in with the justice, what I'm looking at. Um, and the Six of Swords. And their core values and lifestyle. Okay, let me think about this a minute. Two of Swords and the Six of Swords. And you see this Two of Swords. They're both, uh, this is in the intellectual position, and this is in the lifestyle core values, which often relate. The emotional and the sexual often relate more, and the intellect and the lifestyle core values. They're both the blind. This is blind justice. Um, it does feel strongly like a Libra energy, you know, wants to go in that direction. Um, just how it feels to me. Um, and this even makes that kind of stronger. It's almost as if their mind has created a world where they, you know, they get to exercise. Look, it's the same. The swords are now here. They're like beams of light. Huh? And here, they're swords. So it's like this intention they have to bring justice is now, by means of sword, it's being exercised in their life, how they live their career. Um, could imply too that they're in some kind of security. Could imply they're a police officer. Um, it could imply they work in the criminal justice system as a in in a laboratory. Maybe they're Abby at NCIS. Um, maybe they work in so, for a lawyer. Or they are a lawyer. Somebody's got to be a lawyer. I mean, they're bringing this emperor energy. So. Backing in for me a little bit, I usually start with the emotional here at Taurus. But with the Eight of Swords over the Four of Wands. I got to tell you, it, it's I, I agreed intuitively, and it, this feels terrible to me. I, just, I really kind of want to cry right now. And I see something really bad happening to a family, to their home. So this person underwent a bad experience with the hurricane of fire. That's a pretty specific story. So I try to pick up on what's the stories they're going to tell you, too. So you'll know that this is your person, Taurus. You know, the, your soulmate. Something like that. You know, we tell each other stories. But the good news is there was a solid uh, relationship, I believe. So they grew up in a solid, you know, happy home. Um, this could be... They had a parent that was the breadwinner that suffered losses uh, cyclically uh, or repeatedly, repeated bankruptcies, things that had a negative impact on the family. And I get to say the swords is like them uh, feeling that they um, are they the whole family's in jeopardy and so they're feeling that they're in jeopardy you know um you know you always say you can't get it it's look like i mean it's a little weird it's almost like a i think of a baby in their crib and what happens when the parents get agitated when a, someone loses their job maybe again and there's turmoil and disruption and maybe uh, deprivation even um, then the baby doesn't get as much attention even at that young an age. So um, they had, you know, basically solid uh, marriage and people that were working together. You know, this could have been something outside of control. I mean, it could have been a factory worker and you know how you get the layoffs and then you get to go on good and you have the layoffs and something like that. Boom or bust sort of thing with their parents' story. Uh, so uh, with the moon, I, I just want to see an Aquarius moon, though, with them. And that works for me with the Eight of Swords, where I easily pick up the moon. Because so I see them as being pretty emotionally solid. Um, it's hard to... Uh, they're not going to be emotionally overwhelmed, you know, maybe at all. Or definitely not very easily, your person here, Taurus. Um, and with the Wheel of Fortune over Justice, it's Jupiter energy, they could have Jupiter on their sun, or even better, like Jupiter trying their sun. Look at the nail charts, not the hard to get basic aspects. 
Jupiter's sun ain't changing much, depending on time of birth, but 12 noon, but that would be a dead giveaway. Um, and so this is someone, it's like they're kind of lucky, fortunate. They, they tend to just take like the right a risk at the right time. You know, Jupiter comes along and it offers opportunity, which often can involve risk. And you have to believe that the wheel of fortune could turn in your direction. Well, this is be in their chart. It's like also their part of fortune could be very well aspected in their natal chart somehow. There's so many ways that could go down. It could also be around Jupiter energy. Got the wheel of fortune here, which is Jupiter. Um, so, Virgo and you could you could have it um you could have it mars well it would be venus and leo venus and leo and likely going to be a scorpio mars could see we'd be a cancer mars it's an early degree labor, late degree cancer. But this water Mars to go with the Leo Venus, I think, that's going to be prominent for them. Um, with the emperor there, it, this is someone like uh, probably very traditional. They believe in, you know, family values and home and protecting the home. I mean, I could, could be like a soldier here, a person. A po police officer, someone on the front line, uh, you know, a fireman, someone involved physically. Um, and usually with the Six of Swords here, how I read this is this person walks away from intellectual and emotional things that don't serve them. This might be what they learn in their childhood with this Nine of Swords and they have this Aquarius Moon, they're able to detach and move away from things that are useless, like what? Like, you know, COVID, mass, not mass. You can bang your head against the wall over there. Not really gonna help one way or another with that situation. So an Aquarius Moon, not gonna get agitated, put a lot of energy into what happens, you know? Um, they might actually do something about it. You know, they, they're going to worry about it, going to fret over it, they're going to argue about it, going to froth at the mouth about it. You know, they can easily roll away, move away from emo any intellectual things, their own mind. You know, anything that's not you know healthy, productive serves their best interest. If it doesn't serve their greatest good, they, I don't think they're going to tolerate it. You know, um, so you would have this kind of energy, someone that's really strong. Uh, this is if this were to be a male, okay. This were to be a male, to me, it's got protector male all over it. Protector male all over this here, you know. Um, and with the two of swords over the six of swords, I just get the feeling like too, there this person can make tough decisions. You know, you think of the, the weakness of a Libra. What's the weakness of a Libra? Well, they can't make a decision. They, well, I, if I make a decision, then that person will lose, and I don't want anyone to lose. I always want a win-win, so I can't, can't have a win-win, so somebody's got to lose, and so, you know, it can become kind of crazy. Well, this person doesn't have that. They apparently can very quickly uh, make the decision and execute an action, you know, based upon basically kind of a judgment, this Libra-like weighing. I really got that feeling over it, like they would be someone in criminal justice or somewhere else where they're making decisions and weighing things. I mean, there are other places where that goes on, you know. Um, but I get the feeling too; they would, they would, they want their work to be meaningful, and um, they're not afraid to get in there and roll their sleeves up and do something physical. Just not get it. So. Let me know, guys, what you think. You probably wouldn't see this person right away, but sometime we're talking about in a soon. This is a mid-October reading. Uh, I can see this being someone new, so maybe now you meet them, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. But let me know if you meet someone and they start to, you see that they uh, have these placements. 
and tell you these stories, you know. So thank you guys.